it. Paul. Yeah. A three-year time gap's not that bad. No. No. We're going to skip the part where I haven't done anything with this channel for three years. I've been busy. Long story short, I've been wanting to get back to my content creating for a while now. Um, I love it as an outlet. I love the ability to teach things. Um, I just haven't been in the best spot to do so. But we are back and I figured there wasn't a better video to start with than the one I should have made way back then, which is just the Iron Man. The way I left off with my content very obviously makes it look like I didn't finish that race at all. I think two videos before I stopped posting anything, I was talking shit on anyone could do the Iron Man. It's not that bad. And then I dropped off the face of the earth. So I know how that looks. I did finish. Despite this gap, it's ironically become, I think, a bit more pertinent now than it was back then. Um, there's been a large boom in content related to endurance, obviously the hybrid athlete craze right now, but also ultra runners are out making really good content. Um, I think a lot of people are tuning into these more endurance based content creators, which is kind of why I thought this video might be appropriate right now, more so than it was back then. And to me, it has been really interesting to see endurance sports kind of get their like little time in the spotlight. Uh, hybrid athletes have been trying their hardest to make running look cool. It's kind of working. It's it's kind of working, but it is cool to see, um, you know, endurance sports as a whole get some more more respect. Um, back when I first started running, this was some nerd shit. So to see it like slightly drift in the cool direction, I'm here for it. And with that being said, this video is aimed um, at those of you that might be seeing these hybrid athletes post their content. Um, you're seeing kind of the ultra marathoners talk about their 100 mile races, their 200 mile races, Ironmans, triathlons, whatever. Um, so this is kind of geared towards you who are seeing all of this content and, and thinking about signing up for your own variation. Obviously, I'm going to talk about the Ironman here, but whatever um, endurance variant you're, you're kind of thinking about going into. Ironman is always going to be one of those hot topic subjects for endurance it's been branded so well that even people that have nothing to do with the fitness realm at all will kind of intrinsically recognize how hard an Ironman is um, and how much someone's gonna have to put in to complete one and I don't know if it's deserving of how much recognition it gets there's so many harder endurance variants out there um, but I think it is the first thing that like when someone's thinking about signing up for something, it's going to be the Iron Man. So I'm kind of talking to you guys right now. Um, those of you thinking about signing up for your first Iron Man. And I'm going to openly admit that this video might feel like it's missed the mark for some of you. I'm kind of purposely targeting this at a very niche group of people. Um, those very fitness passionate individuals and kind of individuals that I've just spent my whole life around for the past 10 years. So if you're thinking, eh, this isn't really kind of connecting with me, that's probably good. You're probably a more well-adjusted human being. Um, and let's keep it that way. Also, not that he's actually gonna see this, uh, just quick shout out to my dad for all of the footage you'll see for from the Iron Man for this video. Um, I don't have a team. I don't have a camera crew following me around. My dad was out there for 13 hours filming me. Um, so all that footage you're gonna see is just him being out there with me. So with that being said, here's my first video back in three years. I hope you guys enjoy. I've been sitting here post Iron Man for the longest time, not having any idea what to actually comment on about my experience. My problem kind of lies in that every video I've seen related to the Iron Man, the individual in question is just absolutely on top of the world uh, and they're elated when they finish. They're giving this kind of inspirational message and the video makes you just feel good. But having done the race and experienced it myself, I've 
never been able to truly relate to that feeling. In fact, I describe myself as being quite apathetic to the experience as a whole. This left me wondering if I should lie about my experience, change the story a little bit, and tell you that Iron Man was absolutely life-changing for me, get the views, and move on. But I wanted to show the other side of this, and a problem I think persists with anyone who considers themselves an athlete, um, who's been in the fitness world for a long time, and just how we deal with issues outside of health and fitness. The simple truth of it is I signed up for the Ironman because I was spiraling. And the only way I've ever known how to handle those negative emotions was to throw myself deeper and deeper into fitness, into competition, into whatever training I had going on at the time. Having only ever existed in the fitness industry, this coping mechanism is something I've noticed is pervasive in most individuals, whether they notice it, whether they want to admit to it or not, uh, you'll tend to see that when they have issues themselves, they don't address the issues, they skirt around it and deal with it by diving deeper into whatever their chosen endeavor is, be it a certain sport, a certain style of training, a certain style of competition, they'll tend to just dig deeper and deeper and deeper. I was using the Ironman as one big coping mechanism and because fitness is seen as this positive behavior trait, I think it often goes unnoticed when someone is using their fitness lifestyle maladaptively. It's very much a it takes one to no one personality type and personality issue. I wasn't actually fixing myself. I was doing everything in my power to avoid putting in the work to fix behavioral issues that were very challenging for me. Um, it literally was a point where somehow doing an Ironman was easier than actually facing down my own internal problems. It's when a person gets into these major fitness events from a, well, I've got to do this thing so I can be perceived a certain way. I've got to do this thing so that I'm a badass. I've got to do this thing or when I finish this thing, I'm going to be happy. It's such a big pitfall that so many of us that love fitness fall into. So I'd urge you to do the mental check-in with yourself about what it is you're actually trying to accomplish. Are you trying to achieve a very cool personal accomplishment in the world of endurance sports, which it is? Or are you using this as a means to ignore some other issues going on in your life or to hopefully gain the perception that you are a certain way in the world? Do an Ironman because you want to do an Ironman. Do an Ironman because you want to prove yourself to yourself. Do an Ironman because you just have a love of endurance sports. Don't do an Ironman because you somehow think exercising a whole bunch is gonna fix your life or you think it's going to change the way that people perceive you without putting any actual work into yourself. The Ironman triathlon in and of itself is not going to change you. I think all of the personality attributes that people are likely chasing by doing an Ironman, such as grit, endurance, perseverance, patience, all of those things can be learned outside of training in your real everyday life. And in fact, I think you'd learn them at a higher level if you learn to do them outside of a training setting. If you're going into this event, running from something, trying to fix a way you are perceived or the way you perceive yourself, I think you're going to be wildly disappointed when you find out you're still running long after you've crossed the finish line.